Okay, everyone. So I am seeing some pretty wacky stuff in terms of the uh, seating layouts, in particular with aisles and passageways um, in your seats. And so I wanted to do another quick tutorial here and record this and post it online so it's a little bit easier to follow. You can go back and watch this a few times. Um, so we're in Revit. And I've got the basics started here of the stage. I believe that I'm about 50 feet across with a 75 foot arc here. So this is nothing special. This is just sort of a standardized setup. And you know, I'm already getting sort of the geometry and flow together. I, I wanna get seats are gonna nose right here. Um, I believe I have about six feet. Yep, from stage to back of the first seat that might be a little bit too minimal um, but i'm gonna go with it and then i believe i have five foot six from back of chair or i should say front of chair to front of chair okay and that leaves me with what needs to be about oh you know a little bit more than 12 inches not less than 12 inches from nose of the chair to the back of the chair in front of it okay so I've got the basics of the geometry set up. I want to show you how to fill those things in. In particular, on your aisleway, I'm seeing a lot of people have um, the edge of the seats come in and form an aisle that's doing something like this, like where the chairs are in and out and back and forth. And I mean, that's totally not acceptable. Um, breaks code in a whole bunch of different ways. And at the same time, it's a little bit more tricky than just saying, okay, well, I'm going to create sort of a funnel shape with the aisleway as well, because based on how egress works, that might be breaking code as well, because we can't change the width of an egress path by making it smaller in the path of travel, right? So mm -hmm. if, if I'm using just sort of these radial lines, which might make things easier to lay out, but I'm counting on going toward the stage as part of an egress path. That pathway is getting smaller. It tightens things down, creates a choke point, breaks code. So we can't do that either, right? So I want to go ahead and start laying in some seats, doing this with some precision. So we actually make really nice, tight um, aisles that are both efficient. In other words, we're not making these great big aisles um, so that we don't lose efficiency in our seating layout, but also meet code. Speaking of which, code, let's let's hit the code really quick. Oh man, I closed that tab. We'll open that up in the background and I'll continue doing some layout stuff here. Well, uh, IBC 2018. We'll see how fast the home internet's working here. Ah, uh, it's not bad. We'll leave this, we'll, we'll keep this running here. Let's go to 10. Ten twenty nine Assemblies. Means of egress. Okay, so we are 10, 29. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 1029, it's a long ways down here. Ten twenty nine assembly, right? So this is this is where we're looking at egress from our assemblies. Okay, so let's keep scrolling down here for just a bit. Um, obviously, you need to be very familiar with this chapter, but right now what we're looking at specifically are a few of the things that we need to be working with. So 1029.9.1 minimum aisle width, 48 inches. Okay, so my next move in Revit here, if this is the center line of my aisle, I know that I need 48 inches clear, right? So, um, and again, my world is you never go to the minimum, right? So I'm going to do 25 inches to make a 25 inch wide, wide aisle to each side of that. So that this is in fact not 48 inches, but 50 inches. Cool. 
So we've got a little wiggle room there, okay? Super, super important. And important uh, item there is, you know, I, I'm never pushing those minimums, right? I always want to be just gracefully above them. Um, so that was 129.9. And then let's scroll down a bit here to cover the next piece. Handrails, 129.16. Ramp dials having a slope exceeding one unit, vertical and 15 units, horizontal and step dials should be provided with handrails in compliance with section one. 014. Exceptions. Handrails are not required for ramped aisles with seating on both sides. So if you do not have steps, if you are classified as a ramp and you're not exceeding one unit vertical, 15 units horizontal, you do not have to have uh, a center handrail. Um, handrails are not required where there is a side of an aisle. So this is basically saying you've got a guardrail on one side um, that has a handrail. You don't have to have a handrail, which is kind of weird because you have a handrail in doing that. Um, handrail extensions are not required um, at the top and the bottom, which that makes sense because once I put extensions on the handrails, I wouldn't have any place to cross over the aisle to get to my seats, right? So it would be one long continuous handrail. So we need to know that those are there, okay, in terms of laying this out. So that means this center line right here is actually going to become a handrail. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but you need to know that it's there. If you look at the minimum width requirement as well, it does take into account if you have a center handrail, which you're likely going to have a center handrail, then your minimum width needs to be 23 inches between edge of seat and handrail. And so right now with this configuration, I'm at two feet one, so I've got 25 inches. I'm well on my way to making sure I have that 23 inches clear. So let's start dropping some seats in here again. Um, so I'm going to go to annotate, not annotate, architecture component. And I've already got that seat loaded in, my auditorium seat as a basic, really simple thing. I'm going to place it and rotate it and start off oh i've got i've got copy set as default on my rotate right now so let's go modify rotate this guy good grief rotate let's turn off copy we'll see why copy is on here in just a little bit so i'm rotating that around 90 degrees and i'm going to move back of that seat. So I want to move the front of that seat is how I had this set up. I'm going to move the front of my seat right there to the center point. Okay, so I have this set up as my aisle, uh, that set up as my outside edge. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to take this piece and I want to array these in this direction and end so that the edge here is resting at or very close to the edge here. Now, to do that, I need to know the basic width of this chair. So I'm going to go from here to here as a dimension is nine inches. So I'm going to go ahead and create one more offset, both of these nine inches in each direction. So I'm going to go offset nine inches. So if you haven't figured out yet, this is a lot of playing geometry games here. Okay, a lot of playing geometry games. This one right here also needs an offset of nine inches. And that's going to help me determine where to stop my array. Okay, so um, I already have all these coming together. That's my center point of my arcs. Now, if you're not doing an arc, all this becomes way easier, right? So I'm working with the most complicated scenario here. If you're doing um, just straight on seating, um, you don't have, you haven't created any of these problems for yourself, no worries, okay? Um, but a lot of these are, a lot of these are kind of going in interesting directions of how the seats are coming together. So let's select this center seat, my array tool. Um, I already have radial array 
selected, and I'm going to drag my center point down, place it. First seat, so I'm going um, not second, but I'm going last. So I'm going to go center, and I'm going to stop at that nine inch offset line, which is gonna put the edge of my armrest close to the center of my aisle. Um, then I'm gonna make my best guess on number of seats, eight, that was a really good guess. Well done, Dave. Um, again, I don't want the armrests overlapping. And again, remember, your manufacturer is going to take care of this. They're going to adjust both the angle and the size of those seats. What you don't want is if I know my seat is going to be an 18-inch or a 20-inch seat, whatever that seat's going to be, um, I, I want to make sure I'm not seeing the armrests overlap as I'm doing these initial layouts. Cool. So that's my first row right there. Well done. So let's get this next row working right here. So to do that, I'm going to select that seat. I already have this locked in, so I'm kind of cool with just going in and saying ungroup that dude. I'm going to go rotate. I'm going to make a copy of that guy. And again, I'm going to move its center of rotation down to my axis point again, or the, the central part of the circle. And I'm going to go there to right there. Again, I'm using that nine inch offset line from my aisle. From here, I'm ready to do my next array. Drag that point down. And I'm going to array from here to here. And let's do that one six times. Nope, seven, eight, eight, boom. This group, let's go ahead and um, ungroup all of those. Ungroup them. Oh dear. Let's select all those. Mirror them about that axis. Right, so that's pretty easy. See how that's starting to come together? Let's grab all of those. Mirror them again about my central axis. That side's coming together as well. Okay, so let's pick up at row two. And you probably noticed a little skip there in the system. And that is because I made a numerical error. Uh, I had my offsets here at five, six um, from row to row, sort of front of chair to front of chair. And that should have been something closer to three, six. So I made that adjustment really quick here. So that um, arc to arc offset is now three, six. So let's go ahead and copy the first chair of row two. And so now we can do a quick measurement to see what we are. Back of seat, to front of chair is about 18 inches. We could argue that's probably just a little bit too much. Um, we're getting into issues of comfort at this point. Um, how tight do we want that to be? 18 inches might be a bit too much. 12 inches is our minimum. Um, but really it starts with what you're trying to do, how comfortable do you want to make it, and what's the size of these chairs, how they, how they are going to work out, how they're going to stack. So I'm just going to stick with that 3-6. So I'm ready to do my next array. So last, and again, I'm going to drag that center point to the midpoint of my circle, center point of the seat to my offset line. That should be about 9 this time. Nope, too much. Back down to eight. Oh dear, not 28, just eight. There we go. And let's go ahead and um, let's ungroup all of them. Ungroup. Mirror. Copy. Array. Midpoint of the circle. I should be able to get nine this time. Yeah, nine looks good. And let's go ahead and take this guy right here. We're going to do another rotate to set up that next row again. Dragging the center point down. Copy is already activated, so I'm going to go 
midpoint of the chair to my nine inch offset line. Then this one is ready to run the array again. Hey, I don't think I can sneak in nine, but let's try. Yep, a little bit of an overlap there. It's back down to eight. And that is how you start building this piece up, okay? So let's do one more. Let's see if we can sneak nine in on that edge right there. So again, I'm going to ungroup, rotate, move my center of rotation. Array, and as much as anything, I'm wanting to do this so that you can see what your aisle way should be looking like. Yeah, there we go. So, as I look at this now, that aisle is really formed up, right? Those are all ending with the edge of the chair nicely in line. Nothing that's stepping in and out like that. Um, nothing, especially what I was seeing was chairs that were ending up way over here, um, which would infringe on the aisle, um, tighten it down, um, causing a code violation. Um, and even if it's not causing, causing a code violation, I mean, if I'm walking in a darkened theater as a patron, I'm expecting that to be a good line down the edge. I, I'm, I'm, you're creating a trip hazard, right? You're creating an unexpected element if that's not shaping out right. So really look at how to use those tools. Look at how to leverage the geometry that we're creating to make a good solid seating configuration. Um, and again, play a game with the geometry. Know the size of your seats. Know the sizes based on code to get those things coming together really nice and tight. Cool. Thanks, y'all.